Hello and welcome to the next in the series of our Meet the Employer webinars, bringing you exclusive access to inside information from a wide range of employers. This series is run in partnership with Graduate Recruitment Bureau, the UK's leading recruitment service for entry level careers. And I'm delighted to say that we're joined by GRB today. It's great to have so many of you on this webinar, so thank you for joining us. I'm Katie Hilljard and I'm your host for the webinar series, and I'm delighted to be joined um, by Dan Hawes, who's co-founder of Graduate Recruitment Bureau, plus four graduates who graduated right in the middle of a recession and who have come out the other side. Coming up, you can expect to receive valuable tips and guidance to help you right now from those who have been there, done that, and quite literally got the T-shirt. But before we get started, I've just got some very quick housekeeping. The webinar will last no longer than 25 minutes, and if you experience any technical difficulties, don't worry, because a copy of the recording will be made available on the GRB profile in your online career platform. On this slide, you can see a small sample of the type of webinars we have in the series, and we have a growing number of employees confirmed. All the details can be found in your online career platform. So who do we have on our graduate panel? I'm delighted to introduce you to Sandeep Techie, who graduated from the University, um, Oxford University with a master's in neuroscience, Katie Tunstall, who studied law at the University of Leeds, Andy Prickett, who studied business management at University of Exeter, and Shirin Ashraf, who graduated from the University of Oxford, Oxford with a master's in biology. So without further ado, I shall hand you over to Dan, who will introduce you to DR GRB, and will then ask the graduates some very important questions. Thank you very much, Katie, and thank you for having me uh, on the webinar today. You can see from the introductory uh, picture, my haircut um, <laughs> was, was pre-lockdown in that picture there, so um, <clears throat> uh, I look a little bit different, but I'm in the office. Um, our office is in Brighton. We normally have uh, about 60 staff here, but they're all working from home. Uh, so I've come into the office today to... Uh, record this uh, interview with you today. So if you don't know a little bit of background about Graduate Recruitment Bureau or GRB, uh, I'm the co-founder so I set it up with a friend of mine uh, back in 1997. Uh, we both graduated from university having done a business studies degree so we had some understanding of how to set up a business uh, but we've since uh, surrounded ourselves with some fantastic uh, people um, who now uh, have created what we we define as the go-to platform for high caliber university students, graduates and recruiters. So in those 23 years uh, we've grown, uh, we have around 65 staff uh, and we have over 1,800 clients, uh, recruiters from all sectors, uh, all locations across the UK. Some big firms you will have heard of like Post Office, uh, IBM, Unilever, Anacardo, but also lots of other recruiters that go under the radar. So these are fast growing SMEs, um, they need high caliber graduate talent and they struggle to find people. Uh, so they use us a lot. So a very broad range of companies uh, over the years have used us um, to source uh, graduate talent. Now, um, our recruitment experts have actually, in that time, successfully matched over 8,000 graduates with full-time graduate level jobs. So our experience uh, over these years uh, is considerable. And we have been through downturns before, um, not of this scale, uh, but there are lots of uh, parallels with what happened in uh, 2008. And I can't credit myself with this particular idea to bring in this a panel of, of graduates that we worked with back in 2008 is actually my girlfriend and I thought it's a really good idea and the more I thought about it I thought um, people who are leaving university right now are, are, cr are crying out for reassurance, uh, encouragement and, and positivity um, and I, I thought that it would be really good to hear the stories from people who graduated uh, from the last recession in 2008 so I'm very looking very much looking forward uh, to hearing um, their experiences and hopefully um, this will give you some encouragement uh, that, that this will pass, that there is a positive uh, outcome for you. So 
uh, we've got a couple of questions we're going to put to our panel and I'll ask each one in turn. Uh, so perhaps we can start with Sandeep. Hi Sandeep. Hi Dan, good morning, thanks for having me. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your career journey since you graduated in 2008 please? Right, so yes, so I graduated uh, with a master's in neuroscience in 2008 from the Oxford University and um, at that time I wanted to continue my further postgraduate education and um, I applied to a lot of universities and typically what happens in a crisis is that an oversupply of applications and I ended up being on the unlucky side with I think more than 20 plus PhD rejections but I still kind of uh, you know carried on through this you know dark phase where for seven eight months I wasn't uh, uh, professionally employed and then uh, you know there was some light at the end of the tunnel where I chanced upon a job opportunity just three hours before the deadline and I applied uh, you know right then and there with a, a half chart CV and I actually got that position so this was a one-year research assistant position at University College London which I thought I'd only do for a year but uh, it actually uh, had such a positive experience that I ended up converting it into a PhD and uh, was you know again staying on and stayed on in London for another three to four years so I graduated with my PhD in neuroscience in 2014 after which I managed to get a Henry Welcome Fellowship to continue my postdoctoral research at Oxford. So after graduation in 2008, for almost uh, 10 years, I continued further studies before I realized that, you know, I have learned the skills over these last 10 years to actually apply them to industry. So then I switched to uh, the AI industry and worked at Amazon Alexa in the US trying to build uh, you know, smarter speech recognition tools for Alexa, which is a household product these days. And uh, that was last year, and uh, I've now returned back to India, where I initially did my bachelor's. And now I work in a startup called Swiggy, which is India's largest uh, online food delivery platform. So, you know, come a round circle where, I, you know, I started off my career and education in India, then I went abroad to the UK for higher studies, worked in the industry in US and I'm back and delivering impact in India and you know sharing the knowledge that I've gained uh, throughout the course and uh, that's where I am right now. Excellent thank you very much Sandeep I've made a few notes and um, I'll come back to some of those points you raised a bit later sure. that's, that's very interesting thank you. Um, Katie same question to you um, if you could tell us a little bit about your career journey since you graduated in 2008. Thank you, Dan, and good morning. I graduated from University of Leeds in 2008 with a law degree, and there were two routes I could have gone down. I could have gone and got a training contract with the law firm to train to be a solicitor, or I could have trained to be a lecturer. I, there was merits in both routes, so I did apply for training contracts. I really, really struggled. Um, the other route in terms of trying to be a lecturer, the funding was not there, it was very limited what I could apply for. So I, I got a master's um, and I paid for it by working part time in an admin job nearby to um, where I lived. It was quite a good ad admin job and it, it taught me a lot of skills so I don't regret that path at all. So I did that for two years, again trying to apply for PhD funding, again very scarce. <laughs> I really struggled. It, it, a lot of universities had one pot of money for all different disciplines, so it was very, very difficult at that time. Um, I, at that time, I started to think about whether I should look at legal advice again and see how I was going, so I started to volunteer at Citizens Advice, and I loved it. <laughs> I didn't turn back. I found a part-time job nearby and um, giving advice in outreach venues, and I, I, I worked my way up to full-time. Um, and then a job came up in, in, in Liverpool, so I applied, so I moved from Leeds to Liverpool. Um, I, we moved where the work is, don't you? So I moved there, and again, I worked my way up to become a specialist um, in giving benefits advice um, and giving tribunal representation. I, I love that, but again, there was only so much I could do, so I, I did my legal practice course part-time, which was hard work, but worth it. <laughs> 
Um, and I applied for Jackson Lee's, the firm I work for at the moment, because they had a lot of the values that I that I, I believed in working from citizens' advice. Um, I'd heard of the firm while working as citizens' advice. When I'd been there a year, applied for a training contract. I'm now a trainee solicitor eight months ago. The rest is history. Wow, that's that's an interesting journey, and um, the fact that you relocated it is, is interesting as well. In your words, you know, you move for where the jobs are. That's quite interesting. Um, thank you very much, uh, Katie. Uh, Ashraf, perhaps uh, you can tell us a little bit about your career journey when you graduated in 2008. Hi, thanks, Dan. Um, so yeah, I, so I did the I did the master's MSc in uh, biology at Oxford, and I graduated in 2008. Um, and uh, when I finished, I was slightly headstrong about uh, wanting to work for a bit before I did a PhD. Uh, just uh, I, I think I wasn't particularly certain on on the area that I wanted to do a PhD in. Uh, it was probably and um, it turned out it was 2008. It wasn't a, it wasn't a great year to find a job. So I applied for lots of research assistantships uh, across across the board in the UK and uh, lots of universities. Uh, I did get interviewed at a lot of places, um, but I kept getting rejected uh, from pretty much every interview. Uh, some of them offered, uh, some of them said I should apply to them for a PhD, but they can't give me a job because, and I realized part of the problem was that I had, uh, I had virtually very little experience uh, in the field in terms of actually, uh, like anybody who took me would have had to train me up a lot. Uh, and I realized that was one of, one of the things that uh, was probably one of the reasons I was failing at these interviews. Uh, and in that in that course, I had interviewed with this particular lab uh, for a research assistantship uh, that a lab that I really liked. Uh, but I didn't get the job. Uh, but I liked it so much that I asked them if they would let me work for them for a few months just to help out on a project. Uh, and they asked me for like a, a five month or six month commitment, which was quite hard at that time because I had no sort of uh, I had no, I had no um, income. Uh, but I took it on. Uh, it was it was a very busy six months. I worked really hard, um, and I had a couple of other uh, jobs that I did on the weekend just to uh, just to sort of keep afloat. Uh, but it actually paid off. Uh, I got my first two publications from that lab, uh, and that was that was actually a great great feeling. Um, and then in 2000, and then uh, towards the end of those six months, I started applying for jobs again, and I. Uh, I got I got a I got a proper research assistant assistantship with Imperial College uh, in 2009 uh, October, uh, which I did for the next three years actually, uh, which directed me then into a PhD at Cambridge uh, in immunology. Uh, and then when I was writing up my thesis, I'd applied for this one job, uh, and I got that, which is what I'm doing now at uh, at the University of Glasgow. Um, and uh, my PhD, my my first job kind of set me up for the field that I did my PhD in. And then that PhD kind of set me up for um, uh, infectious disease and public health research, which is what I'm doing now, and I absolutely love it. Um, and yeah, so I'm looking to move into uh, sort of move back to India with like a public health sort of work experience, and hopefully that'll work out. So so yeah, so it's been it's been interesting. In retrospect, it was uh, I think I learned something from every stage. Yeah, that's interesting what you say there right at the end that um, you know it took a few twists and turns um but you're able to build on that experience and you know get what you wanted ultimately um so that's that's a fantastic story and very encouraging thank you very much ashra um and andrew hi could you uh, tell us a little bit about your career journey when you graduated in 2008 yeah sure hi dan um yeah, so I graduated in 2008 from the University of Exeter uh, in business management. Um, I had a few um, kind of grad job interviews lined up, like probably a few other people, but that kind of all disappeared quite quickly because of the situation. So a lot of those um, yeah, potential interviews were either postponed or cancelled. So I actually um, decided to go traveling the following year. So I worked for six months at a catering firm in accounts payable, um, essentially I was the, the core kind of duties of maybe a first job. I was literally opening posts, stapling stuff and, and filing, but it was great to experience a routine, uh, even though the work wasn't the most challenging, but at least it was nine till five and, you know, getting, that was the first experience of working in an office. So you learned quite a lot straight away. Uh, so I did that for six months, went traveling for six months, um, the classic 
gap year route, I suppose, so to, to Asia, Australia and South America, uh, and came back extremely poor. Um, so I did some, uh, found some other temp work at a, uh, I think it's a costume house, that where, they're not costume house, basically selling mass, a mass warehouse selling costumes for anything. So I was there for a few weeks. Again, great experience, not exactly what I wanted to do. But did some temp work at my local council until actually um, got a job with the Football Association. So even though my degree was business related, this was within IT, so it's IT support analyst, which was um, specifically around all the events at Wembley Stadium. So even though I was working for the Football Association, it was at Wembley. So um, so yeah, I worked all the major events there, uh, heavily involved with the ticketing aspect and checking all that, uh, and getting involved with other projects within IT. Um, I then moved into a different role there as uh, an IT event coordinator. So essentially coordinated all the IT requirements for the major events, but also the internal events, so conferencing events. And so it was a fairly busy role, a lot of long hours, um, a lot of weekends, but I was young and it was great and um, obviously a great place to work. Um, and then in 2014, so I did that for nearly five years. So in 2014, I moved to another company called Fortress, um, which they do access control at stadiums. So it was heavily linked. So that system was in place at Wembley. Uh, Fortress is currently uh, system which is in 18 of the 20 Premier League clubs so when you scan a barcode or a season card that system a, allows you in with a barcode scanner but holds all the data behind that and the real-time real flow so it's uh it's a it's they're a kind of a small company but um great exposure to sport different sports and one of the main reasons I wanted to, to move there was to travel so I wanted to move abroad but in fact I traveled to the US and Europe every year so that was uh learned great skills there working with different environments um, I left there in 2017 um, and then actually went back to the Football Association in a different role as a ticketing manager. So um, it was a bit bizarre going back. Uh, I had a lot more hair on the first time, so people, you know, a lot of double takes the second time going back to where you work. Um, so some people remember me, some had no idea. But yeah, so I worked there for a year. Um, so that was great exposure working on FA Cup finals and England events. And, um, and then after that, I left, so yeah, I was on a rolling contract there. Um, I actually went left there last year to do some kind of consultancy work on and off. So worked with another small company all around ticket operations and event operations. So worked on the baseball at the Olympic Park and a few Apple Music gigs. Uh, and then as of recently this year, I've started a new role as ticket uh, kind of stadium manager at Tottenham Hotspur. So they've got the new stadium there. And um, heavily, the plan was to work with all the, uh, the non-football events, but because of what's happened this year, obviously that's all been put on hold, unfortunately. So. Uh, that's kind of my journey since graduating to to now to this date. Wow, brilliant! Thanks for sharing, Andrew. Um, again, you know the timing wasn't great for you and and everyone else on the panel, but you, just, you turned it into uh, an opportunity. You know, you thought there's no jobs going. You tried, um, and you know your story may well have been very different if there was a job offer straight upon graduating. It might, you know, well it would have led you somewhere different, but um, you worked for six months in an area that you may not have done before, uh, travelled, which you may not have done as well, and then you've started a very successful career in this sporting world, which which sounds great. So, you know, the final outcome is positive. Um, and you've, um, you know, you've all taken different routes, and of course, it's all about the timing. So, uh, right now, the timing for a lot of uh, graduates is of, of great concern, but I think generally people need to take a, a longer view uh, on, on how they uh, eventually get to the job that they want. It, it's not going to happen for the majority right now. Um, the situation's uh, you know, very, very tough. Um, so taking a long view, I think, is, is, has been a, a common thread throughout this and, and, and is great encouragement for a lot of people uh, that they might just have to be a little bit patient. Um, you'll get there in the end. So perhaps if you could summarise your experience with, with three uh, top tips that you would give graduates right now um, who are about to enter the, the, the world of work, um, what would you say? If we could start with, with you, Sandeep, th three top tips. Sure, Dan. Um, firstly, I'd like to you know, commend the graduates who are about to you know, graduate this year. That, you know that they've see, gone through three to four years of university and they're entering a tough job market uh, even though they're about to earn the degree my first tip would be to focus on skills uh, 
rather than degrees or certifications, because that's what employers are looking for. Um, and uh, you know, not just one skill. So the same skill needs to be continuously learned and you know relearned, because uh, especially on the technology side, things are changing so fast that you have to constantly upscale, constantly evolve. Uh, you know yourself as a marketable candidate to the industry so that you know you're never out of a job let's say and uh, i think the days of uh, a job for life are numbered uh, and going forward i see that uh, you know depending on the skills you can either work for an employer you can start something of your own uh, and the next thing i would advise candidates is that you know although this is a sort of unprecedented crisis but we have all experienced different kinds of pain and you know uh, let's say poor customer experiences so th there's tremendous opportunity now as well to sort of focus on some of these problems that you might have faced and try to solve for them so just to give uh, an example in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis uh, we saw uh, the sharing economy boomed and companies like airbnb and uber emerged we saw new approaches to uh, banking for example we have startups like Revolut and Monzo that are so popular in the UK. And uh, similarly, right now, uh, there are lots of tailwinds for multiple sectors and domains like education, digital health, uh, remote collaboration. So if you feel passionate about a problem that uh, you think you have the skills and the mindset to solve, so go ahead and solve it. This is the time when you are facing the least risk in terms of your career journey. And you can actually end up building something huge, which will have a lot of impact on millions of people. Perfect. Good advice, Sandeep. Thank you very much. Particularly the one about, um, you know, starting up, you know, and it could be an opportunity to begin your own career and, and set up your own business, as, as lots of companies have done uh, during recessions. Um, thank you for that. Um, Katie, what, what are your top tips for, for this year's graduates, please? my top tips my first one is not to worry too much i was guilty of that i came out of uni and i thought i can't get anything i'm rubbish i'm not getting anywhere what am i going to do try and treat it as an opportunity and enjoy the journey i wish i would enjoyed it more when i was there and tried to pick up more when um when i was in the different jobs and working my way through but you, you'll learn complementary skills to you that will be helpful in the end and it'll refine more what you want you'll learn a lot about yourself I learned a lot more that's helped me know exactly what I want to do now, which in the end is, is a long term goal. And you'll, and you'll become more of a well rounded person because you've been through all these different things. I think the key thing is to, second one, is to be yourself. You need to find the fit for yourself. You need to find the employer that, that fits you as well as them. So don't think too much about fitting in with them. They have to fit in with you too. And the last one is um, don't give in. <laughs> Um, sure, keep going and it'll, in the end it'll show you're great that you've you've you, you, you've yeah I'm starting now you've, we've gone all the way through all of all experiences and you've made it thank you yeah it, it will be a tough time and um, showing grit and resilience is a key skill with employers so you know you're going to get asked what did you do during the lockdown you know if you can show that you've kept moving learning new skills show resilience that will go down extremely well um, Thank you for the, uh, that advice, uh, Katie. Uh, Ashraf, perhaps you've got a, a, some tips that you could advise this year's graduates. Yeah, I think uh, I can actually add to uh, to the previous ones. Um, I think that what I found I, I, what I found um, a good learning experience is to be slightly open-minded uh, about what you want. So it's good to have a, 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 a you have to have a good idea of what you want long term. Uh, but don't be too stuck on what you what your perfect next step is because it might not be the perfect or or what you think is the perfect step but it might work out uh, it might even work out better for you um, and in some ways I think it did it did for me um, so yeah so be slightly flexible uh, know what you want but be open minded to to new experiences uh, and second the second tip would be try try more unconventional ways of getting to where you want to be. Uh, I think it always helps at every stage to stand out by doing something which not everyone else is doing. 
so, so if you find, so it could be something simple like trying to find unconventional ways of funding, which are, uh, you know, like there, there are lots of smaller charities, etc., which which fund students that actually don't, like, which are not like the major ones which always advertise. So, like, look, look for, look for, uh, basically find your own way of doing something which is not necessarily what everyone's telling you to do. Um, I found that quite useful uh, in, in general in your career, even when you get a job. Um, and it could, I mean, also like try extracurriculars, uh, which could be in these days, like it could even be something like setting up your own YouTube channel or something. Uh, I mean, that's just an example, but I, I find there's a lot more opportunity than there was 10 years ago, but uh, uh, but try something extracurricular wise as well, which, which does add to your CV uh, and just show uh, your versatility. Uh, and my third tip, which is not necessarily a career tip, is just be, be kind to yourself uh, and also to others. Uh, it's important to realize that a lot of people will be uh, in a stress, will, will be going through a stressful time. So, you know, be nice to yourself, but all, and also realize that, uh, you know, everyone's not having a great time at this at this point. So, uh, so, so try and be nice to others as well. I think being kind is quite important to this, as was quite important when I was at this stage I think it still is. Yeah absolutely I, I'd echo that um, taking care of yourself and um, it can be very easy to slip into a negative mindset so um, that's very important to to stay positive. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Andrew uh, perhaps you could share uh, some tips for this year's graduates as well please. Yeah absolutely um, that's what kind of drew me into this was actually obviously being in the same situation and obviously uh, what's going through now. Um, and just touching what I think we've all said, um, staying positive and confident, I think really, because I think it, for me, going back 12 years, it was so easy to think, you know, that degree was a waste of time. I'm going nowhere now. I was promised I'd get X, Y, and Z. So um, you're in the same boat as a lot of the people. You've worked hard, you're unique, you've got your degree. So just stay positive and stay confident and, you know, the times will change. Um, for me, one thing was network. So I did a U-turn, I was quite envious. I left in 2008 and I, I knew lots of people who were getting into jobs because of people they knew. and that way in and obviously I was quite jealous and then 18 months later how I got to the FA was via my dad's friend it came out of nowhere and he poured it on a job so I think it's if you can you don't have to go over the top but just to explore all avenues so just your parents friends your friends neighbors just drop things into conversation because the moment you can get in somewhere that's it that's the hard part um, and once you're in and linking to that is attitude so um, from my experience in events and long hours and weekends showing a good attitude can can be the most important thing I think that can apply to a lot of sectors um, and, you know, especially in events, my experience, it's a small sector to so actually the opposite can happen if you don't show a good attitude and, you know, can, can kind of bite you in, in the future. So, you know, once you're in, just show a good attitude and work hard and you, that's, that, will, that will be the foundation for success, uh, in my opinion. And then if you can study, again, one part I wish I didn't have a master's, so that's one area I didn't do, but if, if you can and you can endure maybe the next year studying or a language that's one area which i've really done so if you can and financially do that maybe this quite be a good time to knuckle down and just add to your add to your cv in that respect that would be my my tips brilliant thank you andrew i, I particularly like the networking one which no one else mentioned and uh, you know that can open doors a friend of a friend of a friend or or even even using you know platforms like linkedin there's been a, a surge in yeah. projects using linkedin so so things like that uh, always can increase your chances of opening the doors for you. Um, that's brilliant. I mean, there's 12 uh, really useful nuggets of advice for um, graduates who are, are very anxious, I'm sure, right now, and, and they're looking for reassurance. Um, I mean, we're speaking to thousands of uh, graduating students right now, matching them up with employers. Uh, not as many as we'd like, um, but we are... Uh, sensing that uh, you know they're, they're quite easily uh, finding that, that that things are hard, uh, get they're giving up, uh, and they can be slipping into a negative mindset. So I uh, I'm delighted that you've been able to share these very uplifting stories uh, that you've come through it, you've been there, you've done it, um, and your careers are, are ticking along nicely. So thank you very much uh, for sharing that. Um, perhaps I can. Uh, uh, summarize with with three uh, takeaways uh, based on on what our panel has said but but also from from my experience as well having 
um, spoken to, to students and graduates who've been through these downturns uh, over uh, you know 23 years. Um, the what the first thing I think uh, is is so important is to have that positive mindset, and that that's reiterating what what is underlying what what our panel has has um, uh, demonstrated today that you know they some you know you can it's very easy to panic take the first job um, that you're offered but this episode has given people an opportunity to pause and reflect and take time about that next decision um, so being positive and confident in that decision um, is really really important um, and I'm hoping that uh, your stories will have given people that um, positivity and reassurance that whatever decision they make, as long as it is a decision, um, that's all that uh, that that they can um, they can do right now is take a positive uh, step. So you know, for lots of graduates, this could be a very steep learning curve right now. Um, but if that's the case, then taking very very small steps uh, will help you get to where you want to be. So that would be my first uh, tip: having a, a positive uh, mindset. Uh, the next thing is is probably getting creative with your um, job application. So uh, Ashraf actually talked about thinking outside the box uh, with how um, she got her first uh, position, that, that, that six month um, uh, assistance position. So um, being creative with with trying to find employers. Um, Thinking outside the box, you know, there are some sectors that are doing very well right now, but, you know, it's widely known. So there's going to be lots of graduates, you know, about half a million who are now entering the job market, all trying to um, get jobs with these big uh, firms that are the obvious recruiters. But there are lots that go under the radar. So maybe start by looking at a local business park, um, going on LinkedIn, finding out who the decision makers are. And even if they haven't got any jobs advertised, sending a CV and a covering letter, in other words, a speculative application. Uh, I've seen this work many times where you've done your research, uh, you've approached the decision maker within a company, straight away you're reducing the amount of competition. And if you send a very impressive covering letter and CV, they may actually want to hire you uh, based on your skill set. So, speculative applications is just one example. Of, of being creative, thinking laterally right now. So that would be my second uh, tip to, um, you know, be creative and, and think differently uh, because the job market is super competitive right now. Um, and my final uh, tip would be, you know what, there are other options. We've, we've, we've heard from our panel here that um, one person decided to go traveling. Um, quite a few decided to stay at university to do postgraduate study. Um, or you could even start up your own business. So, you know, you don't have to enter the job market right now. Uh, there are other options. So take comfort in the fact that, although there is a lot of pressure, there will be debt from um, studying at university, you don't have to uh, enter the job market straight away. Things will improve, and who's to say in a year or two, uh, the market will return to where it is. So um, that would be my final uh, takeaway. Dan, thank you so much for joining us today and a really big thank you to our panel of graduates, Sundeep, Katie, Andy and Shirin. It really has been fascinating to gain insight into your experiences having graduated at, at such a challenging time. Um, to all those that are watching today, we really hope you found it useful. Um, this webinar is part of our Meet the Employer series. To find out about others that we have running, all you need to do is go into your online career platform, head to the newsroom, um, the click the webinar tag and you'll see the full schedule of webinars that we have scheduled. Places are limited so please make sure you sign up because they're turning out to be pretty popular. <laughs> Lastly, we'd absolutely love your feedback. So um, at the end of this session, a very short pop-up will appear on your screen. Please let us know what you think and we'll incorporate your feedback into the future webinars we run. All that's left to say is thanks again for joining us and uh, I hope you can join us on a future webinar.